Hello, in this video, I'm going to discuss the primary hormones that are involved in the control of blood pressure. Uh, so the first one is antidiuretic hormone, ADH. Uh, it's a hormone produced by the hypothalamus. It is then sent down to the posterior pituitary where it is stored and then secreted as needed. Um, so it affects the blood pressure by increasing blood pressure. Um, its main job is to cause the body to retain and preserve its water. Uh, so its important role is to act on the kidneys to tell the kidneys to retain water. Uh, if somebody doesn't have antidiuretic hormone, then they would produce large quantities of dilute urine that it would ultimately be fatal um, if they were without antidiuretic hormone for a prolonged period. So you would actually urinate all of your water supply and you cannot survive that. Um, thankfully, that, that particular problem, diabetes insipidus, is pretty rare and very treatable. Um, but just to illustrate the point, so it causes the body to retain water and in a good way. I know we often kind of demonize the idea of water retention, but we do need to maintain our water in our body to maintain our blood pressure and other functions. Um, so antidiuretic hormone decreases urine volume and increases blood volume by allowing you to retain your water. Uh, it also decreases the water that you lose through sweating. Um, you may have noticed if you've ever been extremely dehydrated and in a hot uh, climate, if you start to uh, approach, <laughs> you know, some kind of heat exhaustion, uh, you may notice that you stop sweating at a certain point and that's your antidiuretic hormone uh, is preventing you from further water loss through sweating. Uh, so at that point, it's really serious because you need the sweat to help lower your body temperature, but you need to retain water even more. So you end up in a, a sticky situation there. Um, antidiuretic hormone also causes constriction of arterioles, which increases our vascular resistance and is another mechanism through which we increase our blood pressure. Okay, aldosterone uh, is a hormone secreted by the outer zone of the adrenal cortex. So in the outer zone where we're secreting mineralocorticoids, uh, which is a class of hormones that acts on our minerals. So aldosterone uh, is acting to regulate minerals. It acts on the kidneys, tells the kidneys to retain more sodium and chloride ions and to excrete potassium ions. Okay, angiotensin II. Um, so the production of angiotensin II is pretty complicated and I'm actually going to discuss this in a separate video, um, but the precursor of angiotensin II is formed by several different processes through the liver and the kidneys and then converted in the blood into angiotensin II, which is the active form. Um, so it also causes an increase in blood pressure um, it causes vasoconstriction, so it increases vascular resistance because it causes the narrowing of the lumens of blood vessels that increases the resistance to blood flow and therefore increases blood pressure. It also increases our retention of sodium and chloride ions, um, which allows for more retention of water because we have more balance. We always have to keep our water and electrolytes in balance. Um, so we can we can only retain as much water as we retain of sodium and chloride ions to balance that water and keep our ratio in the right place. Uh, it also stimulates secretion of aldosterone that we just discussed on the previous slide. Atrial natriuretic peptide, atrial as in the atria of the heart. Um, so this is a sort of interesting protective mechanism where uh, the atria, when they fill with blood, if they're filled with maybe a little too much blood, and so there's too much stretch of the atria, it signals uh, release of atrial natriuretic peptides. So it's triggered by kind of the overstretch of the atria due to too much blood volume. Uh, so its effect is to decrease blood volume and therefore decrease blood pressure. Uh, so it causes vasodilation, which decreases our vascular resistance. So the lumen becomes larger, so we have less resistance to the flow of blood. It also decreases retention of salt and water by the kidneys. Um, so it therefore uh, decreases our total blood volume. 
and it increases glomerular filtration rate. So that's essentially uh, the rate at which our kidneys are filtering our blood. So the faster that rate, the more we lose in urine. Okay, so the faster the GFR is, the higher the GFR, the less time we have to reabsorb water and solutes when we're filtering out our blood. So faster GFR is going to mean greater volume of urine. So more water and solutes lost. Um, that's also a mechanism of certain diuretics. Diuretics act on the body in different ways. One class of diuretics acts on our glomerular filtration rate. It speeds it up and causes us to lose more uh, water and solutes. So atrial natriuretic peptide also has that effect. Uh, and then finally, oxytocin. So uh, oxytocin has all sorts of nicknames. It has a reputation for being a love hormone, a cuddle hormone. Uh, it's a hormone that we produce in response to social bonding, um, bonding between uh, romantic pairs, bonding between family members and parents and children. And um, so it's, it's a hormone that is really important in our social bonding. Now, Oxytocin is also secreted as part of the stress response. Um, it's, it's largely what causes us to reach out for social connection when we're stressed out. So when you're going through a stressful time, we secrete oxytocin when we have like chronic stress going on. Um, and it has important physiological effects. Um, so it helps dampen the more damaging physiological effects of our normal stress response. So it will actually lower your norepinephrine levels. Um, and so norepinephrine, it will act on the heart. It will increase uh, heart rate. It increases the force of contraction, both of which are going to increase cardiac output. Um, so oxytocin will lower your norepinephrine. So it kind of counteracts those effects. Uh, it lowers heart rate, which decreases cardiac output. It stimulates vasodilation. So it decreases vascular resistance, and it also has other protective effects on the cardiovascular system, including it being anti-inflammatory and that it stimulates angiogenesis, meaning um, that it stimulates growth and repair of blood vessels. Um, so it's important to understand that oxytocin is part of the stress response and that when we connect with our loved ones, uh, we listen to music, we cuddle, we kiss, we hug our kids, those sorts of things, um, that we're producing more oxytocin, which has a protective effect on our cardiovascular system, among many other functions throughout the body. All right. Well, thank you so much for watching this video, and I'll see you in the next one.